Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Elephant in the Room. And today we are going to be discussing smart money moves for 2024 with a very special guest that we are excited to have today, a lady who needs no introduction. But um, please go. Thanks Let's for having me. Um, first of all, so my name is Ivy Wanjiru, better known as Just Ivy Africa, um, a content creator, digital entrepreneur, fun lover, mother, event moderator and speaker. Um, and I love money. My first question today is going to be, I'm sure 2023 was an eventful year for you. So take us through what your journey financially was in 2023. And maybe just a step back, you could start by letting us know what has been your relationship with money. I always like to tell people that I have a very open relationship with money. Like if I was dating money, it would be an open relationship, you know, in a sense. I think I'm I'm a risk taker. I'm, I'm, I'm also realizing that it's not one size fits all. And True. I also match my money habits or my money personality at that time to uh, my humanity. So what I wanted in 2020 could be very different from what I want in 2023 and yeah. what I want in 2025. And it's okay. I, I allow myself to flow with the current of the currency that is money. Being open with money means that, for example, uh, growing up, my folks, I, I can see, um, we talked about money at the table very openly did i understand the nitty-gritties of some of the conversations no but the fact that my parents would talk about money openly when we are there because you see, as a child a lot of your learning is through imitation sure. um I'm, I'm happy about that i know for example my mom as soon as i turned 18 and i was able to get a proper allowance she handed over insurance to me now you can start paying this is what it's about da, da, da. opening my first bank account my mom was right there for me um, my dad taught me how to negotiate. I am an excellent negotiator today because of my dad. And he taught me this like from the age of eight. So my relationship with money has always been open. I, I've always known we, we don't hide in, you know. It's not a secret. It's not a secret. Which unfortunately I think in, I would say in the African society, yeah. we see that money is such a closed off topic. Yeah. Uh, something as simple as when people are looking for jobs in this market, it's very hard to find positions that disclose mm -hmm. Uh, the salary cap, mm -hmm. but when you go to the Western world, then someone knows what exactly you're applying for. So I think it makes sense why you're where you are today. Yeah. And Although even just uh, sometimes openness has these pros and cons because okay. nice because of the openness, mm -hmm. um, it it was very easy for me to quickly tell people, oh, this is how much I'm earning in my first uh, job, whatever. And then you tell the wrong people, then suddenly black tax attacks you. Yes. So there's pros and cons to openness. True. And yeah. So I I wish I learned boundaries earlier, but that's what we are doing now. Remember, we're flowing naturally money is considered to be like a river mm. if you want to be successful you have to treat getting money like flowing with a river because it's always circulating it's always in motion the, the moment money holds or stops then our economy will crash as we know it yeah? true very true this is this is i don't want to sit here and, and tell people i've set my goals for 2024 i have the figure that okay. i need to have invested by the end of the year but I have not broken that down into the tactics. Let me just we hold need to be you. honest. Yeah. Guys, I hope you've had it's the money she wants to invest, not by the end of the year, not the goal being how much you're going to make by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. okay. How much will I have invested? Because mm -hmm. I set that goal for myself in twenty twenty three. Okay. My um in twenty twenty three and I achieved it and I was so surprised, man. I was like, What? It's possible. I loved it. So I've not broken down my goal. Obviously, it's double from last year. Maybe not obvious. Let me tell. I want it to be double. Yeah. Uh, because I've seen it's possible. And I feel like I set a lower goal last year so that I don't disappoint myself. But that's not who I am. I love thinking big. So I've not set out um, exactly the tactics, how it's going to be done. But I know the figure that I want to have invest invested in various instruments and uh, platforms. 2023, as I said, was good was good. I set out to do something and I did it. And I think the biggest takeout for me was the discipline in literally shutting my eyes and saying whenever uh, income comes in, without fail, 40 to 60% will go, depending on my budget for that month. True. 40 to 60% will go to investment and I will leave it alone. So at the end of the year when I was calculating where I am, I remember calling my sister and laughing. I'm like, hey, yeah, you know, I forgot. I have a loose XX million here. And we laughed like, oh, what? That's crazy. So that discipline in just automating. And then what else also helped with my discipline is just 
the, the certain payments I make sure are done either in time or on time, whether it's my team salaries, starting with my nanny. Because I always tell people the most important part, part of my team is my nanny. Paying people ahead of time and in time so that I can live guilt-free and invest guilt-free knowing that everyone else is taken care of. And then, of course, maximizing returns. I'm not saying Kenya will be stuck in our current uh, economic crisis forever, but currency in itself always fluctuates. True. And at least we can say for the next foreseeable future, we are not going to have a stronger currency than the dollar. So if you hold, you're supposed to be holding for the long term. Exactly. And that's what investing is. It's basically discipline and thinking of the long term. So basically we've reflected on what you did in 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of learning in terms of discipline, uh, setting yourself straight. So what challenges did you face mm. on your investing journey? Mm. I think the challenge for me is just always what it is I said, accepting the humanity in me when it comes to money. Because sometimes people will think there's a set science to money and we forget that you have to you have to give yourself grace. So at the beginning of the year, for example, I told myself I, I'm I have to buy an apartment. I have to. This is the year I want to say I, ha I want an apartment, you know. But as the year progressed, so the challenge for me was... Obviously, I didn't buy my apartment, so I did feel some type of way, but learning to forgive yourself that, that that wasn't it. And after you come across new information around how money works, just being okay, okay mm -hmm. with it. So for me, the challenge was, what, how is it that I knew that these are the goals that I want to set out to do, but because I've changed my mind mm -hmm. or because I've got a new information, I no longer want to go here. And this is after speaking them out to even a few people, even on social media. Because yeah. I remember the other time I posted, I was like, yeah, if I do this, da, 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 I can own an apartment by the end of the year. It's not it's not there. And this is another challenge I face, especially in my industry, because you're very vulnerable putting yourself and your goals out there. True. And people will hold you accountable because, Ivy, you said you're going to buy a house. Where the hell is it? Where is it? So there's a challenge I, just, um, um, I know I've, I face. Just giving myself grace when it comes to money. And another thing is uh, tracking. The discipline that comes with tracking your spending every month is just something that really, really, really gets to me. It gets to me tracking every single coin. But I know when I do it, like, for example, this is something I've been telling people this year. I've stopped doing acrylics because when I sat down with myself at the end of the year and realized how much money I was putting in nails, the girl must I could highest. afford a holiday, a nice holiday for myself. So I was just like, why am I doing this? You know, <laughs> so it's also a challenge because, you know, you like to look a certain way or yeah. such things and there's the image you want to keep up with, but it's really not making sense in the pocket. Ah. And then the final challenge is, I get it, goes back to our industry because sometimes you feel the pressure to keep up with the Joneses. Why are other people in the industry, you've been there for the same amount of time, da, da, da. why are they building? They're achieving all this, malls, where am I? Not even mansions, malls. <laughs> why, why are they buying these cars? Why are they able to? So what are you doing? But once you become financially literate, you realize if everyone is going left, you just go right. It's fine. You don't have to follow the That's quail true. egg crowd. If you've set your individual goals, you have to put your blinders on to what other people are doing and stick to that. So let me tell you, the pressure sometimes that you can get from social media can get to you. Um, and, and you feel the need to just post something to shake things up and to tell people, show people that you're successful. But honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way for me. Money is emotional. It is so emotional for a lot of us. So if you don't have that grace, and as you said, for you it might be because of your job and its way out there, but even on a personal level, perhaps for me, is if I've set up a goal, I want this and I miss out, or I'll bash myself. Or actually, let me say, I used to bash myself. You know, it's like, it's okay. It's okay. Where do we pivot from here? Mm, what's next? Mm. So you always have to keep that in mind, like, yeah. what's next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you've mentioned some of your mistakes along the way, a more on uh, feeling side, but on the actual sense of what do I do from here? Mm. What has your journey been in that case? Due diligence. <sighs> People don't do their due diligence. People expect that Ivy has done all the homework mm. for them, and by the time Ivy is speaking about something, it should just make sense for them to invest in it. And here's the thing, I don't mind that because uh, your laziness is making me wealthy because I will do my due diligence. Yeah. I only partner with specific people. You guys know how long it took for us to... Actually, I was going to mention that, but I was like, is it premature because we are announcing our partnership? Please. But yes, 
Ivy's due diligence, she goes in deep. Yeah. She goes in deep. Yeah. But back to you. Not okay. to say that you shouldn't do your own. Do your own. <laughs> yeah, because you see, in, for me as a, a public figure, trust is my currency. If I lose it, I lose everything. So I have to do proper due diligence. But even due diligence in terms of, so, okay, you see um, a platform is giving you 15%. Have you calculated after tax? Um is the interest simple or is it compounded? Yep. How long do you have to put your money in there before you can withdraw? What are the fees in even managing that particular asset? There's so many questions you should ask yourself. That's why I say patience and paranoia. Yeah. People don't go a step further to check what is the fund behind what you're investing there in. There you go. Guys don't know that mm. you are actually entitled to us. Doesn't matter what big company it is mm. or if it's a bank, mm-hmm. you should know where are these people investing your money mm-hmm. in? At what phase is this company at in their growth? Mm-hmm. They might be at a cusp of a downfall. Mm-hmm. If you're seeing an asset manager who every year they have changed their CEO, mm-hmm. there are question marks. Mm-hmm. So due diligence is important, guys. It's so important. And we always encourage everyone, uh, for the clients that we have on Dovo, please go confirm with CME. Mm-hmm. Be sure we give you all the documents for, are you sure you've read them? Mm. You're not understanding them? Come speak to us. Because it is your future. And something that you've mentioned that's very important is investing with a goal. Yeah. I know we are, guys are always told, put some money aside. That's what we learned from our mothers and fathers. It's nice to have something. For a rainy Just, day. Yeah, for, exactly. That's an emergency fund. Mm-hmm. So it has a goal. The mm. goal of that is an emergency fund. Mm. But do you know the actual Thing that you're investing for like you said you want an apartment i am sure by that time you checked which areas are going to give you the best returns which real estate agents you're going to work with because you can just be saying that you want i'm setting this money aside for a house yeah but do you know what this house will cost you? Yeah. Do you know if you're buying land, all the legal fees that you'll incur? Exactly. Is it a one-bedroom house, well, two-bedroom, three-bedroom? Exactly. Does exactly. it have resale value? There you go. Yeah? So that you're not stuck with just money that will end up giving you bad returns. Yeah. Because you might end up buying a house, yeah. yes. But is it something that will give you your money back? Or will it end up being a liability instead of an asset? Yeah. How does mindset influence your financial planning and the decisions that you make. Mm. Um, so for me, mindset, it has to start with just understanding where you are and being self-aware and acknowledging, okay, this is where I am now. I have, let's say, a scarcity mindset when it comes to money because I grew up feeling like money is never there or I grew up not knowing where money would come from and that type of thing. Uh, when I first got my first job and I was financially literate, um, I just used to put money in a bank account somewhere. So I knew about saving for a rainy day. But that was all I knew, okay? Mm. Um, put the money in a bank account, and what I would do regularly is just check to see it's there. Because I was so fearful, because I grew up also seeing people lose their jobs and you go to nothing. So I was just like, I just need to know that I have savings so that I'm safe, okay? Wow. But I didn't know at the time that that means I was operating in scarcity because I was True. hoarding. It it, it, it it was the wrong mindset, as opposed to abundance where you feel like, okay, it's okay, let me split this money up between this and this and grow it for a better future, I was operating from scarcity. So your mindset affects, your mindset can either gain you or cost you. Yeah, most of it is, I say, that feeling of being safe is you don't realize how much you're limiting yourself Mm -hmm. to even other opportunities out there. Exactly. Because one thing, money will never be enough. Ask all the billionaires, it's still not enough. Everyone is just a shilling more. That's actually my goal. When people ask me, how much do you want? Just a shilling more. That's all I want. Do a you know, I say more. enough. And this is something I said saying recently. I started saying, how much do you want? I say enough. I want mm-hmm. to get to a point where I don't want a shilling more. Like, I know this is okay. Because it's such a fine line between satisfaction and being greedy. And then you can end up doing something completely off, but I cut you off. Yeah, yeah. no, it's actually true. I think when, when I say just a shilling more, <laughs> it's the enough I take it in terms of am I content? Yeah. And also being content comes back to your mindset. True. For I may not have all that I want right now for all my goals, but am I content with where I am? Yeah. Yes. Why am I content? Because my mindset is right. Yeah. I know that 
this is not where I'm going to be tomorrow. Yeah. You know, like yeah. everything good that I want is coming to me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And the steps to take also to get to like a positive mindset, which is something I've been doing recently. Um, like even just practicing gratitude. Uh-huh. Um, and giving, for example, charitable givings will also really help secure your mindset surrounding yourself with people like you who understand and talk about money regularly and talk about it in a good way. Because also negative self-talk when it comes to money can really, really affect you. If you're constantly saying, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, you have no idea what you're putting out into the universe because money is energy. Mm-hmm. Have you ever sat someone and I don't know mm-hmm. how I'm going to pay for this, but the money will come and it comes. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so there's certain steps that you can also take towards achieving a, a positive mindset. But I think it all just starts with the need and the the need to just understand how money works. I'm blessed to be self-aware enough to know that I'm not for everybody. Okay. I've always been very ambitious. I've always been a high achiever. I've always wanted more. I've always wanted bigger for myself. And that causes a lot of co- cognitive dissonance with a lot of people. Because yes. they, they, can't, they can't think, like if I sit down and say, oh my gosh, my goal is a million dollars. They're like... From where? From where? And Don't you just do, do Instagram? You're elitist. <laughs> so what, what do you mean a million dollars? There's no money, blah, 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 blah. So I think figuring out a good um, support system for yourself starts with figuring yourself out. Okay? Mm-hmm. So that's one. So I'm very blessed to have um, even family. Like even this, um, the recent IFP, we invested with my family. So remember I said we grew up around talking money. Okay? Mm-hmm. So that's good. I have great mentors who do so much better than me, who are always very willing and open to talk money or talk shop to me or blah, blah, blah. Even recently I met, on, I met a mentor, proposed an idea, and, and she told me, I'll fund that, just bring it over to me. Um, but again, I also want to remind people that a great support system can only meet you as far as you've met yourself. True. So if you're not doing great things yourself and for yourself, that will not follow you, which is again goes back to mindset. Yeah. So the mindset starts with you. Uh, I also recognize that there's a few people that I needed to drop and a few spaces that I need to stop going Mm -hmm. because I kept feeling shrunk. So sometimes you still keep meeting people and you lead from hope and your heart and you're like, maybe this is going to be a good connection. But then you realize maybe not. And the only way you'd be able to realize that is if you have your set boundaries. You know, you have a checklist. The same way you do due diligence for your investments, do due diligence for the people who you're going to let into your life True. because i've also had to let go of very successful people who we didn't have values matched yeah. when i found out how these successful people are getting their money it was killing me mm-hmm. and i also found out that they were probably more interested in having me help clean names than help me in life ah. so sometimes even letting go doesn't mean you're just letting go of broke people True. there are people out here who are living large and but what exactly are they also offering you did the just form just Ivy? Is it part of the reasons that you added it to your brand name? Remember I said I'm not for everybody. Yes. So it, I'm, I'm those people who, for example, my best friend has to explain me to a lot of people. And they're like, where is Ivy like this? Ah, that's just how yeah. she is. That's just, just Ivy. Ivy. Okay. Yeah. So don't take it personal. That's just Ivy. <laughs> you need a filter system. That's what I usually say. Yeah. Because um, when you're letting go of people, as yeah. you've mentioned... You have to be sure why you're letting go of these people, especially with the younger generation. It's like, they did me wrong, cut them off. No, hold. You can cut off people from different aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. It might be a good person who's in your circle. They just aren't meant to be part of a specific journey Mm -hmm. that you're on. Very true. You know, a random learning Mm -hmm. that, uh, and I don't know how this this would be taken. So sometime in 2023, I invested in a particular real estate against the advice of my wealth manager okay so here's the thing my wealth manager and i when we set our goals and everything they were like yes you'd be able to own this don't worry about it but how can we make your money pay for this and not you you understand Uh, right where can we put to work where thank you where can we put your money to work enough for it to buy this land for you but I just asked, it's like, you know, it was an emotional purchase. Mm-hmm. It was a prime purchase. Um, and literally, I think this year, the amount of money I spent on that particular piece of land, the the, the, the value of the land has 
grown in ways I cannot even begin to tell you. So even in my heart of hearts or in my gut, even though I feel I feel I made a good decision. Okay? okay. Hear me out though. Right now sitting here, I know by the end of next year, I still will not have done anything with this land. So I go back to my wealth manager and realize that maybe, maybe it wasn't for me at that time. Yes, mm-hmm. it'll still appreciate, but it's not doing much for me. And I put in a lot of capital there. It's not doing anything for me. You didn't look at your liquidity. I didn't look at my liquidity. If I had done the math correctly, mm-hmm. I probably would never have purchased that piece of land. It, it was pressure and stuff and that. And also bragging, right, to say uh, that I have yeah. this amazing piece Another of land title. but the math wasn't math thing so that's a lesson mm. it's it's like a double-edged sword like trust your gut because i'm still happy i have it yeah. sorry man imagine i'm happy i have it <laughs> but here's also the other thing about people who tell you not to buy land they have so much land everyone always tells you i don't buy land yes how much do you have always ask them how much do you have well just 30 acres yes. like what the heck but yeah. you see it's also a lesson because they have 30 acres sitting doing nothing if they're taking that value and put it into another investment they would be good that, what I do think, you think? No, actually, it makes a lot of sense. And it goes back to what we were discussing. For Your investments need to have a clear goal. Yeah. Um, the land thing, again, for us Africans, Yeah. since if you look back to all the investments that you ever had, what we, ha- what we have is savings, yeah. which is now put some money aside. Mm-hmm. The two circles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Savings accounts. But the moment you hear investment... Most people will just go to real estate. Yeah. Because that's what we've grown up with. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, you have access, go buy shares in Facebook, invest in this ETF. There wasn't that. Mm -hmm. It was own a piece of that Mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. It gives you social status, as you said, bragging rights. Mm -hmm. They are not Uh, making it anymore. Yeah. So they give you a pressure where you're just like, land is not being made anymore. I have to get it now. If people are there just talking about, I'm going down to my Kashamba, you're left there like, don't I have anything? Yeah. And when we are doing our financial advisories at Novo, most of our clients, when they're coming in, that's goal number one. Surprisingly, it's land and a car. Interesting. That is what Kenyans are interested Interesting. in. Interesting. Do I have a car? Do I have land? And as we're speaking to these guys, you realize most of it is social pressure. Mm. But if you ask someone, okay, fine, uh, this are your savings from? From your Jumbo Junior account mm. to now you're 30 mm. and all your thing of like you've gotten this land. Okay. What are your plans for this land? They go blank. They go blank. That's me. I'm Kenyan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <here. laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> okay, listen, it's not a you problem. Yeah. It's just understanding the... Because we are a sum of our environment. Yeah. Yeah? When it comes to investing in land, true. Land will always appreciate if you're smart about where you're buying land. But you should ensure that you're always liquid. In that, if you're getting a piece of land, please have a goal for it. True. If you're buying that land to be your retirement home, fine. But why are you buying your retirement land at 25 years old and your goal for retiring is when you're 40? Mm-hmm. What should you're, you do instead? Yeah, because... Have you considered, fine, you have the land, yeah. then which money are you surviving on, on your retirement? Mm-hmm. What are you surviving on? Asset rich, cash poor. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we have so many people in this current uh, state yep. where everyone is trying to dispose land. Yeah. All your goals are going to come to you if you plan well. Yeah. But don't be in a rush to do it. 100%. Um, yeah. uh, my lesson, I'm not buying any more land. Imagine I'm done. For now, I'm For done. Now. It's, I like swiped it out of <laughs> any goal. I'm like, I, I'm not doing this anymore. What did I do? So I recently started watching, and it's so bad. It's one of those. It's a show. It's not a movie. Mm-hmm. It's one of those shows that are so bad, but you just keep watching it. It's called The Rookie. I'm on season one oh, Lord. of The yeah, Rookie. It's, a bad it's so show. bad, but imagine I have to keep. I, but let me tell you why I like it <laughs> because I'm always telling people that I was a late bloomer. Um, mm-hmm. When it came to my financial journey, and this is a guy who went and joined the police force at 40. So it's wow. f- to tell people that it's never too late to start because people can look at you and think, oh my God, have you been doing this for long? Nope. I tell people three to four years is how long I've been doing this and I'm okay with that because I've forgiven myself for my past mistakes. I'm okay with that. And I'm a rookie and I'm a budding rookie and from rookie I'll become a newbie and then from newbie I'll become a, mm, then I'll become a detective and then I'll be who I am. So um, I would tell you the rookie. Small, small what, steps. Small, progress. small steps and 
being bold because you have to be bold also yeah. he also he's also he was always being especially brought down by his initial boss the guy was just like you have no space here yeah. and that's how i feel that the industry treated me in the beginning when i said talking about money on instagram i got a lot of flack yeah. like it was how who goes to instagram to get money advice who the heck is iv she's from over 25 and what she talks about is something else yeah. so you have to also be bold and stay the course and it's just never too late so they rocky and it's such like a bad <laughs> movie although me i'm not a bad move movie or a bad show but <laughs> you just have to keep watching i don't know so as to why we have ivy here today which has been amazing thank you very much thank you. we do have some exciting news for our heart as well as the movers oh and actually our heart yes i love it <laughs> yeah the elephant in the room i know i was like a heart of elephants yeah right mm-hmm. i love it <laughs> and actually just before we get to um our partnership yeah. Tell us about your Movers and the Movers Society. Oh, thank you. So Movers is my community. I don't call my people followers or fans. In fact, if you meet me and you say, I'm a fan, I tell you, you're not a fan, you're a Mover. Mover. Okay. Uh, it's what I call my community because I realize the community of Movers and Shakers and just people who are hungry, like me. Mm-hmm. People who want to do better. People who want to learn. So that's who my community is, especially around the social media space. And the Movers Society is an investment club come academy. It started off as me wanting to share space with people who we can hold each other accountable in these things but I didn't realize that as soon as I announced I want people I got 6000 sign ups so I was just like okay what do I do with this um, <laughs> how do I how do I handle this so I started giving guys free newsletters that until I figured out okay maybe what we can do is what I can do is start courses on various aspects a holistic aspect of life because you see being wealthy is not only about money it's about many other okay. things so i launched my inaugural um financial literacy course it's called a guide to becoming a dollar millionaire mm-hmm. and the reason i picked that is because i like to think big i don't want to just find out how to be a kenya shilling millionaire i want to know how to be a dollar millionaire mm-hmm. and um i've taken a few courses here and there and i wanted it to be easy i didn't want someone to sit down for hours and wonder okay how am i going to go through this class I do want people to think oh, how am I going to do this assignment so it's a very easy learning um uh platform uh you're taught by wealth managers and we have beautiful fireside chats with actual literal dollar millionaires so it's also very very practical in that sense okay. um in a nutshell for financial literacy that's my uh move society and we've launched cohort 2 May 9th and I don't know who is going to come in and take over one of our classes and I'm very excited about that. We are that. looking forward yeah. to it. <laughs> But this <Your> is <laughs> the <guy>. official <laughs> announcement uh that Dovu is in partnership uh with Just Ivy Africa. Yay. So we are bringing the movers and the hard together. Yes. For the hard feel free to move over to the movers and for the movers you're welcome to join the hard. Uh, and we will be taking you guys on a journey on how to invest uh, especially in the global market yes please say uh, that yes, again in the global market yep. um which is like i've as mentioned don't just think in the currency of where you are at uh, go higher i've actually been telling guys i'm done de- de- dealing with the dollar i am looking at the Kuwait currency now. Come on. Yes. Are they still the wealthiest? Yes. We look forward to having all of you. Um sure Ivy will be sharing a couple of steps on her platform as well. And whenever we have the events, we'll be sharing with you guys as well. All are welcome. So, thank you everybody and have a good day. Bye.